those darn pests. Mahanos. Aptasia. Mahanos. Aptasia. Mahanos. Aptasia is one way of keeping us humble because they come out of all of our rock work. They come off our frag plugs, they sting our corals. They just become a pest anemone that we don't like looking at. And over the years, we've used many different products to remove them. Um, lemon juice, Kalkwasser paste, Joe's juice that no longer exists. Um, Aptasia X by Red Sea, which was my favorite, kind of glued the mouth shut. Um, some people have injected them with boiling water. Some have injected them with lots of, you know, like a very strong saline solution. Um, others have sprinkled salt right on them in the reef. Uh, that happened at the Georgia Aquarium. Uh, there's been muriatic acid used. <laughs> and finally, a uh, number of years ago, a friend of mine came out with a product that used electricity to zap your coral. And when he showed me the gear, it was a PVC pipe with a whole bunch of wires dangling off of it. He basically had taken his doorknob apart, his doorbell apart, and made this thing. And it was crazy looking. But he showed me as he was electrocuting his aptasias. So he did an article for Reef Addicts. That was back in 2010. Then this gizmo came out by someone, I don't remember who, and you had to put your grounding probe in the water, and you would plug this into the wall and press the button down, and this would become electrified, and you would submerge it in there. Then another one came out that was more modern, uh, the Mahana wand, and that's somewhere in my arsenal of goodies as well. And then a couple of years ago, this guy came out, I believe this was called the Aptaser, and it has the ground right here as well as an aluminum probe. There's no on-off button. You just put it in the water, and you can see the bubbles are rising. So let's pretend this is an Aptasia. And I will just take it and put it directly on the core on the pest anemone until it died. The problem was they'd retract into the rock work and you kept poking and trying to cook the side of it and eventually you'd get most of it and maybe even boil completely every little bit of it off the rock, which was the best part. If it all floats up and there's no life left on the rock, you've killed it, that's ideal. Now this was okay, but you have all of this tubing here that was kind of risky to breaking corals in my tank. I had to be really specific where this was at all times when I was working with it. Now I must say. I never felt unsafe with those products. They're low voltage, and they're putting in something like nine to 12 um, volts of power into the water. And I have a grounding probe on my tank, so it's not a problem. Then, this came out. Now, let me just tell you a little backstory. A couple years ago, I read a thread about a Aptasia laser where you literally were pointing a light through the glass of your tank and killing Aptasias. And I read that thread from beginning to end. I read all the comments, all the warnings, all the cautionary tales. And I also watched a couple of videos. It looked amazing. Couldn't wait. But I never did the legwork to find one. Back in December, the fish store on the other side of town put up a post on our club's forum saying that they were selling these lasers and to put your name on the list. And I was the first one to reply. I said, put me on that list. I want a laser. Didn't even know what it cost, didn't know what it looked like, didn't know the model, didn't know the strength. All I knew was that this store was using it for their maintenance service, and they were killing Mahanos and Aptasia in their service tanks across the Metroplex. And if it feels good enough for them, it had to be good enough for me. So this is what I got when I showed up. A cute little suitcase. When it comes in a suitcase, you start feeling like James Bond. And inside, there is the actual laser. There's safety goggles. There's these little tips that you can shine on the ceiling to make interesting patterns that have nothing to do with what I'm doing. There's a charger, and then there's the tiny batteries. Now, when working with lasers, you have to have cool eye protection at all times. And I have to tell you, it's crazy looking at the world through red visor. Uh, everything has no color. And to me, it makes me imagine what it might be like for a colorblind person, because I was looking at my reef you can't see anything. Uh, everything's bland. There's no bright spots or dark spots. There's no color whatsoever. It filters it all out. That's my bottom line. Your laser itself has a pointer, and then the other end is the clicker to turn it on and off. When you unscrew it, 
the batteries go in the opposite of what you might imagine. Typically, any battery you ever put in a flashlight, you put the, the positive straight down inside. It does nothing. You have to put it in backwards in this one. And these batteries are, wow, this is funny. I know they're blue, but with these glasses, they look black. Uh, these are 3.7 volt batteries, and they're 1,200 million. So I'm ready to shoot. This is a D battery, and you saw the other one, the blue one. Here's another one. That's the comparison in size. The 3.7 volts is the most important part. That's how much power you should be putting into your laser. And then the second number, which mine was 1,200, is how long it'll last. So everyone agreed 2,000 milliamps would be better and last a little bit longer. Apparently this is the type of battery used in these uh, smokeless cigarettes people are using nowadays. I'm not a smoker, so don't know. All you do is turn it on and point it at your Aptasia and start killing it. Now the tip can be twisted until you come to a very fine point. So I'm going to be showing that to you, but I just kind of want to give you a slight uh, demonstration first before I do it. I've tried to film myself killing Aptasia several times and my hand is always in the way. So I really hope I get it right this time. But basically, you're just trying to find that spot. Is that the way? And then you want to pinpoint it into like a needle tip. Oh, look, it's smoking. <laughs> that worked. I have, that's the first time I point on anything other than in the water. I haven't had anything weird happen like the glass change color or drill a hole through the glass. Um, it did not do what you would expect, like in a James Bond movie where the laser is going to kill James Bond. It just quietly irritates the heck out of these animals. So let me show you how some of that works. Each day as I zapped these different Mahanos, and I picked some big thick ones on purpose to see what would happen, I could see they would shrink down and look smaller and smaller. So I was making progress with this battle. I also noticed that if it was a tiny one and I hit it, it evaporated. It was gone. Some people are worried about spores being released and more of them appearing elsewhere. I haven't seen any reason to believe that's true. Can they crawl? Sure. But if they're unhappy, they're not going to move too much. I mean, how much can they actually accomplish without a regular food source? This is a spot in my tank that I've been working on for the last week, basically for this video. I wanted to see how they work. This is after treating it pretty much daily for, I don't know, two or three minutes in this one particular area. This would be a very hard spot to hit from above, working down in the tank since it's down by the substrate. And my tank is 30 inches tall. But you can see there's a Mahano right about there. And actually, when my goggles are off, I can see all of them, <laughs> all the green guys. But when the red goggles are on, it's very hard to tell what's there. You just don't see anything. So, for me, that's a problem. But, what I've been doing, and my theory that I want to explain to you is, I think if you keep lasering these guys and knock off their tentacles, I think that that will kill them. Because they won't have a way to feed. And the more you do this every single day, the more likely you'll hit these guys and get rid of them from your system entirely. Now, I'm just showing you in a matter of seconds what I'm doing. It's just, I can hear the crackling now. That sound of crackling is like bacon being cooked in a pan, and you hear it right through the glass. It's amazing. What I've been doing is trying to hit these, uh, these uh, Mahanos for about 60 to 90 seconds each without getting my arm wet and just keep them miserable and unhappy. And I'm turning the laser to try and get the focus to a pinpoint. It's definitely made them very unhappy. They're not opening up. I can do this at night after lights out or I can do it while the lights are on. The fish are pretty much staying away. I did notice last night a starfish was coming over and I was wondering if he could smell cooked an enemy. <laughs> Something else worth considering is how far away the subject is from the front of the tank. Uh, 
uh, I was told that if you are within 12 inches, you're okay. Well, that Mahana right there is about 12 inches away. I'm going to try to zap it. As you can see, it definitely pissed it off. Now, if I stayed on this spot and didn't hit my little zoanthids there, that would be ideal. I can hear the crackling. Now this time I was shooting at about a 30 degree angle through the glass instead of straight through. I think straight is better for more pinpoint accuracy and less deflection through my glass, which is three quarters of an inch thick. A pair of batteries lasts about three to five minutes, maybe a little bit longer. The light doesn't look different to me, but the pest anemone stops responding to the light. So I'm thinking that's pretty much when it needs to be replaced with another set of batteries. Cool beans, huh? That's the sound of Mahano going bye-bye. Okay, let's give this a shot. This one Aptasia or two is inside that Capricorn. It's, it's been annoying me for a long time, and I've actually been trying to kill it with electricity and with different poisons. Nothing's worked. So we're going to try to laser it from above through a photo box. Oh, it's a big juicy one, too. So what I'm actually targeting, I don't just hit the middle of the anemone, I'm actually hitting each tentacle, trying to cook them all off, so that way this animal can't feed anymore. Now the flutter box, you can pretty much get in there. At different angles. It's hard for me to hold the box and the laser and focus it, so I'm kind of hoping the focus is just right. And then the other challenge is I'm looking through red and this thing is almost invisible. So what I do next is I turn off the laser and I check with my real eyes without the red and see how I did and then continue. I think I pretty much told you everything I can about this so far. Uh, another thing I encountered is that when the batteries are dead and they need to be charged, of course the light turns on red on the charger. The charger has a plug in the back. But I found that after they're charged, the light stays green. So like right now it's got a green light, even though it's not even plugged in. So I would as soon as I saw it was green, I took them off for the here so that it wasn't like using them down, wearing them down. And having lots of batteries, I think is best. I think that's a fantastic deal. Um, my friend had ulterior motives. You know, he bought me some batteries, but he wants to borrow the laser for his tank. And I can't blame him. And in a way, I appreciate the donation. That was nice because, you know, this was an expensive uh, test because I wasn't even sure if it was going to work. I just went on blind faith that what the fish store told me was true. And Dallas North Aquarium sold this. They order them in, I guess, ever so often from China. Uh, there's no name brand. I can't give you that. Uh, I know you can Google this kind of stuff. You can check eBay. There's websites dedicated just to lasers. I didn't go to all that trouble. I just kind of went, like I said, it was an act of faith. Uh, I did have a lot of fun using it, and I'm going to continue to have fun using it until there's just no more pests in my tank. And this is really nice compared to what I've done in the past. And I feel like I can just be like a, like a surgeon and using a laser scalpel remove these guys. So if you have any questions, I'll answer them as best I can. If I don't know, I'm going to tell you I don't know. And I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to future videos with the tank with less pest and enemies in it. And I think that's pretty much it.